car completely hands free. Seven month old dog. Okay guys, how to successfully get your dog in the car, how to ride with your dog in the car, and how to get them out of the car in a safe and frustration free way. The first thing I like to do is put them in a sit. Put them in a stationary command a couple feet away from the car. Then what you're gonna do is open the car door. If they break their sit, that gives you an opportunity to say no, sit, and click the e-collar, okay? Because we don't want the door opening to be a cue to just be able to break all of your commands. So, got him in a nice sit, right a couple feet away from the uh, car door. I'm gonna go ahead and open the car door. If he breaks his sit, it's gonna be no, click the button, okay? Car door's open and because Bernie's such a good boy, he stayed in his sit, good job. So my next step is going to be using my pointed finger, pointing into where I want him to go and saying, place, and showing him where to go. At that point, he's gonna hop in and then I'm gonna close the door. Bernie, place, if I can show you. Good boy, nice work. And then I'm gonna close the door. Then I'm gonna get in my car, Make sure that our dogs stay in a downstay for the entire duration of the ride and because he's done this a couple times before he put himself in a down if he didn't put himself in a down I would have told him a verbal down and if he didn't listen I would click my e-collar then it's time to drive and if he pops up during the drive you guessed it click on your e-collar and he should pop back down but this really is the safest way to ride with dogs in the car, especially if you've got kids. I don't want him up here like jog, you know, running into this or pacing or barking out the windows. I have a car seat back here. So really the safest thing for him is just to relax for the entire duration. Okay, let's go. Okay guys, we're back home. As you can see, we're parked on a street full of cars that could be driving by. There's two reasons you want to teach your dog to wait politely at thresholds. And thresholds include car doors. One, I don't want to be opening doors and getting him used to just bolting out and flying out as fast as he can because it's a safety issue. What if there was a car driving by and I lost control of the leash and he runs in front of a moving car? You don't want that to happen. You want to always teach your dog that any open threshold, you look to me for permission. You've got to pattern that early and that happens by every single time you're holding your dog accountable for staying and waiting and listening to you. And the second reason is respect. You don't want your dog blowing you off. So you put them in a down and you don't want them just blowing you off and not listening to you. So what's going to happen is I'm going to use these moments to leverage the respect from my dog to me. So I'm going to go ahead and open the door and if he breaks out of his down or if he tries to fly through the doorway, I'm going to correct on my e-collar, put him back, repeat the entire situation. So we opened up our door. Because he's done this a couple times before, he's like, I know the pattern. But this is how easy it is for you to get it too, okay? So you just have to practice a couple times. If he makes mistakes, you correct, you put him back, and you repeat the whole thing. And then you get a dog like this. Now he's just waiting, he's like, oh, there's no anxiety, there's no anticipation. He's just like, oh, what are we doing? Maybe I just wanted to open it up, say hi, and close it again. <laughs> I don't want him blowing past me. When I'm ready for him to come out, I can either recall him or I can release him. Alfie, break. And there he comes.